Hi everyone! Welcome to a new video which will hopefully explain why I have been absent from YouTube for the past two months. Spoiler alert! I did costumes for a musical! Which, just to get this part out of the way since we are still in early 2021, which if you are watching this from the distant future we are still kind of in the middle of a little bit of a global pandemic. And I definitely had my reservations about going out and joining a new theater group to be able to do this. And before you get super mad at me in the comments and telling me how irresponsible this is, I live in the middle of nowhere. I live in a very small town and we are honestly pretty isolated from the rest of the world. So in my specific area, the numbers of infections for the past six months or so has been very, very low, has been so much lower than the national average. So is it irresponsible to be putting on a live theater show? Kind of, a little, yes, I acknowledge that. But also was I going absolutely stir crazy because I still don't have a job and haven't met anyone in this state yet? Also yes. So after taking into consideration my own personal risk factor, which I was very low risk, the fact that I really don't go anywhere other than the theater and my own house, the fact that I don't ever interact with anybody who would be considered high risk, and also the numbers and data from the area in which I live. After I considered all of those elements, I did go ahead and decide that for me and my situation, joining a new theater group was worth the risk. Now that is not true across the board, that is not true in most cases of people, but for my personal situation, I was willing to take that risk. I am also now fully vaccinated and whenever I go places or interact with people who are not within my little theater circle, I do still wear a mask and social distance in public. So all those disclaimers out of the way, let's get on to the video. Well, hello everyone. I regret to inform you that I appear to have made the most egregious error, and that would be undertaking a very large project and failing to mention it, both on this channel and on Instagram, which I tell you to follow if you want behind the scenes updates, which is at Thread and Needlefish. The truth of the matter is I had a much uh, different, very large project planned for the month of March, and then I signed up to do a musical. It's not quite a musical. I signed up to do a musical review, and in the process of rehearsing for this, I uh, let it slip that I like to make costumes and I like to make clothes, so I bet you can imagine what I got asked to do. So this video is going to be a little bit all over the place. I'm just going to kind of talk about the kind of stuff that I'm doing, the kind of stuff that I'm making, talk through some of my processes. I've made costumes for theater before, and the process of doing so is a little bit different than making clothes for regular daily wear. Mostly because with clothes for regular daily wear, you want everything to be finished nice and professionally and very nice and neatly on the inside. But when it comes to theater costumes, there are a couple of different priorities that you need to make. One of which is you kind of want to leave the insides a little bit raw and a little bit unfinished, specifically for the reason of since these costumes are likely going to be entered into the kind of costume storage warehouse that they have, there is a potential that a lot of these are going to be reused in future productions, especially because there are going to be four identical copies of one dress and then three identical copies of a different dress. So that way, in case the company wants to reuse the dresses in future productions, it's easy to go in and make little alterations to let the dresses fit whoever needs to wear them next. I'm also working with a lot of different materials than I normally do. Personally, I try to stay with natural fibers uh, as much as possible, usually cotton. But when you need four identical copies of the same dress and it takes about three yards of fabric to make each dress. So when you need 12 yards of fabric for a set of costumes, and this is a this is a small community theater, we don't have a whole lot of money, you gotta cut costs. So I'm working with um, a lot of polyester, which is something that I don't usually do, mostly because I'm terrified of accidentally melting it. So far, knock on wood, it's been going very well. But why don't I kind of take you around and show you a little bit of what I've been working on. All right, so these are not finished yet, so they don't look great, and that's because, again, they're not finished yet. Um, but this is one of the projects I'm working on. This is one of the dresses that I will be wearing. This is the one that I also have four copies that I need to make of. So this, I actually got to use one of my original vintage patterns that I picked up at a local thrift shop, which I'm super excited about. So this is the pattern that I am using, which this is Simplicity, what is this, 6243? Uh, and this has the date of May 14th, 1968. So um, this lady made this pattern on May 14, 1968. But anyway, we are making this shorter version. So I sent the director team my whole catalog of all of my vintage patterns because this is a musical review that is a tribute to the USO. So the whole show kind of takes us through the 1940s all the way through the 1980s. So I sent my pattern collection for them to kind of flip through real quick, see if there was anything that they wanted to use, and this was one of them. So real quick, I made myself a little mock-up, which is somewhere around my sewing room. 
So this I made out of three yards of a quilter's cotton that I've had in my stash for a while. I thought it would be a great opportunity to sew through this uh, pattern real quick to make a quick mock-up to see how it would look to see if this was kind of what the directors wanted. So you might notice this is this is a little big um, and by a little I mean a lot big. You can just see the difference from there and there. Yeah. Um, so the vintage pattern is a size 18? size 18 and a half and the body measurements that correspond to size 18 and a half are a little bit smaller than my actual body measurements but I wound up adding about four inches of extra fabric all the way around and the dress wound up being about four inches too big everywhere so I just figured okay well next time I make this for myself I'll just make it on the pattern again I got in my own head and psyched myself out a little bit and I did make some changes when I was cutting out the real dress but I have some actual reasons for why I was doing that so the difference between modern patterns and vintage patterns is a lot of vintage patterns came in one size. So this entire envelope is just the pieces that I would need for size 18 and a half. So when it comes to costuming for women of very different body shapes and body sizes, uh, this produced a, a little bit of an issue. So for myself and the other lady who is closer to my size measurements, basically what that boiled down to is putting this dress on both of us and, and taking note of some different alterations that I would have to make. As an example, our measurements are very similar, but I am a very wide and flat person and she is more of a narrow but deep person so for her to make the measurements work out I had to add um, more room in these side seams so that I would give her more room this way and that so all of the the darts and the bust things wouldn't get pushed too far out and for me I wound up having to add a little bit of room in the center front and in the center back so that that way everything would get pushed out to match and I wouldn't have too much extra room here. Also for the younger girls because we had two 13 year olds in the number who are very very tiny um, I took one yard of this other fun uh, scrap fabric that I've had and what I did was I believe I took one inch off of all of the seam allow all of the seams so the center front center back and the side seams and I tried this on both of the younger girls and it worked out pretty well fit pretty well um, and I assigned each of them a color so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see on camera but I have a pink highlighter line and an orange highlighter line and this is their center back seam so I was able to use this to get a fit on them and work through all of my measurements so the director picked out this kind of really deep royal blue uh, polyester fabric and he wanted something kind of sparkly on top and then plain on the bottom. So we also picked out, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a glitter tool that I flatlined onto the polyester and just kind of sewed all together. So the top is going to have this glitter tool on it and the bottom is going to be just this plain uh, deep blue. And as you can imagine, my sewing room and my iron and nearly everything in my house is currently covered in blue glitter. But in terms of this project, I am about ready to start working on the skirts so that I can get these skirts attached to the bodices. I have already assembled most of the bodices. I did a fitting on all of the girls with the bodices. I made a couple of adjustments. Um, a couple of girls needed things taken in at the waist. Some needed things taken in at the shoulder. And just tonight I finished sewing and understitching all of the facings all around the neck and all around the arms. Um, I'm going to wait to tack down the facings until I get into the theater because that's something I can do by hand while I'm sitting in rehearsal. So that is my current situation with these blue dresses. So what I'm doing right now is now I am moving on to working on the three matching like the supreme style dresses. The director wants a kind of a tank cut uh, neck uh, something form-fitting but not super super tight um, and long and sparkly so basically what I'm going to have to do because I don't have a pattern for this is I'm essentially making a giant pillowcase um, I'm gonna have to put some holes in this for the arms um, so I'm making a giant two yard long pillowcase for each of the three girls and I'm going to have them put this on and then while they're wearing the pillowcase, I'm going to pin this and mark this to their own measurements um, so that it will fit exactly how I want on them. And I think this is going to be easier than me drafting three separate patterns for the three separate girls because they all have their, their size is similar, but their body shape 
is very different. Um, and considering how form-fitting that they want this dress to be, um, I think it'll just be easier to tailor it to them directly. But the good news is now that I have moved on to this, this means that I have finally finished all the blue dresses. So once I get those pressed and probably steamed, I will give you a proper tour so I can show you the inside and all the little, um, little tricks and tips that I did for those. And what I mean when I say that I'm basically making a giant pillowcase is I am taking this two yard cut of fabric, I am sewing it shut along the selvage edge, and then I am opening that back up and refolding it so that selvage seam now becomes the back seam. And I am kind of arbitrarily measuring I don't know, that's probably what, six or seven inches um, away from the seam on each side and I'm leaving that open for a head hole. Um, and then I'm just stitching this shoulder and I am making a quick notch um, here right below the seam and I am cutting open eight inches uh, for the armhole for them to wear it for me to pin it on. Um, and in case that um, armhole winds up being way too big and I need to raise it, I can just raise this shoulder seam up a little bit and it'll shrink that down because nobody, no one in this show is over, or clarify, none of the girls that I'm making costumes for, for are over six feet tall. Um, so this will definitely be way too long and I will have to hem it, um, but that's a lot of room to fix some errors. So yeah, that's what I mean by pillowcase. All right, so let me take you on a little tour of these costumes. So there's four of these. This one is mine. Um, so for all of the other girls, I took their little name ribbon and I stitched it right here on this back facing. Mine doesn't have one, so that's partially how I'm gonna know which one's mine, which means that now that these are done, I finally get to clean up all of the blue glitter that is all over my sewing room, just in time to replace it with pink glitter for the other dresses. So admittedly, the backs, particularly the zipper installation, is not really pretty. Um, part of the reason I didn't want to do an invisible zipper was because in the early 50s, invisible zippers weren't really commonplace yet if they had been invented or they were like very new. So having more of like a hidden zipper um, was a lot more common. Also, in my experience, invisible zippers do not lend well to quick changes. Um, if, if there's any way to guarantee that an invisible zipper is going to get stuck or break, it's when it's being used during a quick change, so I avoid them in costumes that have to be quick changed at all costs. Also on a more personal note, I grew up in the ballet world and all of my costumes were done with hooks and eyes, not a single one was done with a zipper. So zippers give me a little bit of anxiety when it comes to stage costumes, so I do my best to avoid them or make them as foolproof as possible. So I have done my due diligence of zipping all of these up and down a million times. Oof. There we go. To catch things like that from happening. But also with the zipper not looking too great, I'm also not worried about it because on stage you really shouldn't be showing your back to the audience very much. So in theory, the audience won't be seeing the back of the dresses that often. So I'm okay with the backs not looking great. Something else that I did that you might be able to see from here is I used different facings. Um, initially when I was cutting this out, I wasn't 100% sure that I was going to have enough fabric to cut every single piece out of, so I decided I was going to use a different fabric for the facings. Um, I was hoping I would have enough of this really dark navy blue for everybody, but I didn't, so I prioritized this dark navy blue on the arm facings of the people standing on the outsides because they'll have more people in the audience looking at them on an angle and the audience will be more likely to see those facings than to see the people who are standing in the middle because um, they'll be looking at us direct head on. So I went ahead and I used a cotton facing for all of the arm facings and also the neck facing and that's mostly for the comfort of the actors who are going to be wearing costumes because those are the parts of the costumes that are going to kind of rub up against more delicate areas of skin. I wanted it to be nice and, say it's not particularly soft, but nice and like not itchy and not irritating um, because I did have to leave a lot of the inside of this raw. So as you can see here on the skirt, all of these seams were kind of just pressed open and left raw. I left a big close to two inch hem on all of the dresses. Same thing in case they need to rehem these for a different actress a couple years down the line, they can go ahead and do that and add a decent amount of length if they would like. So you may notice that there is a lot of puckering in this fabric and the skirts and that it's not super um, nice and pretty and pressed. So I think what's going to have to happen is these costumes are going to have to get steamed before every show. Now the directors are planning on doing I think three weeks of full dress rehearsals before the show so honestly I'm not even gonna bother at this point. I'm not gonna waste my time because this is very much fabric that you you look at it wrong and it wrinkles. So why don't I get mine on real quick and I will show you kind of what it looks like. Alright so here's the dress. I will be wearing Spanx for the show so this won't 
be an issue. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun uh, getting to make this and work with this pattern. All right, so these are now done and ready to head out at the theater and live there for uh, the rest of forever. So here is a fitted version of one of the kind of tank dresses that I was making. And for this one particular dress in particular, I don't know what I was doing every time I tried it on this poor girl, but I messed something up every single time. So I waited until this last possible second to do any trimming down. Um, so I just used a zigzag stitch going all the way longitudinally vertically. All the vertical seams I'm using a zigzag stitch because you really won't see much of it. It also doesn't really need to stretch but I like knowing that it could if it wanted to. So I have all of this extra kind of folded fabric so I'm going to trim most of this off. I'm going to try to keep a half inch um, to three quarters of an inch kind of seam allowance on there just to make me feel a little bit better about sticking this on somebody. And cutting away all that excess fabric is going to make things lie a little bit uh, more nicely on the body. It's also going to help me when I get down to the hem, which I just kind of loosely, um, I eyeballed it so I won't be sewing through so much material on the bottom and I'll just have that little bit to worry about. I'm lucky enough that these dresses kind of fit a little bit looser so once they hit the hips they just go straight down. They're also not floor length, they cut and they're going to be hemmed right about the top of the foot or like the bottom of the ankle right about here if that was a foot. They're also only wearing these for one number so if they're not perfectly even I'm okay with that. Low on my priority list with something I would like to consider doing is adding a little slit in the back so just opening up that um, back seam up to the knee. I marked the back of the knee on all of the girls. So that's going to be on my low list of priorities so once I get everything finished and we are going to have the first rehearsal with them in Sunday. Yeah, Sunday is our first full dress rehearsal, which is in two days, but I have the next day off <laughs> to work on this and my costume. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with the hem because I want to see how much this fabric will stretch under the machine and on the tension that I have. Um, I've also lowered my tension a little bit. I found that I needed to do that for the last dress to kind of help with the puckering because I would like to avoid having to finish the armholes and the neck holes by hand with, it's not gonna be bias tape because it's a stretchy fabric, I'm just gonna cut it on the grain and use that. And if the hem stretches out a little bit, I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm going to get the hems done. Um, I also marked a couple little nips and tucks. Um, so for some of the girls I needed to do just a tiny little um, two darts uh, in the front right under the bus to help kind of curve it to the body and fit the thing to the body so that it'll look nice. Um, all of them I had to take the waist in just the tiniest little bit so I marked where that was and um, I must say these look these look really good on on those girls and I'm I'm very proud. I don't know if I have any right to be because I'm completely making this up as I go along but I really like how it fits. All right so I kind of decided that in order to finish these um, I was going to bind them. So here is one that is pretty much finished. Um, there are a couple little nips and tucks that I have to make um, on this one, marked by these pins, some, some little darts. Um, but you may be able to see here I have this quick little um, just binding edge on it. I'm not too concerned with it looking um, a little wobbly or not 100% perfect. Um, again, this is only going to be for one number in the show, so you know, if it's not perfect, it's okay. No one's going to see it for more than three minutes. So in order to make the binding, basically what I did was I cut out from some of my scraps a bunch of these one inch long strips and I'm just folding them over the raw edges of the um, arm facing or of the arms and of the neck opening. And I'm not worrying about like double folding this over um, because this is a knit fabric so it really won't fray. It sheds a little bit because it's metallic and that's kind of just the nature of the, the beast with these kind of fibers. Um, but it's not going to fray and I'm not incredibly worried about it. Again, this is also from the stage and from as far away as the audience is going to be, it's not really going to be that visible. So I think once I get all of this done and I get all of the little little bitty darts and tucks and, um, and things of that nature sewn on, I think I'm going to call these done for now. I'm going to see what they look like on stage before I decide if I want to fully line these or not. Because I know everybody's going to be wearing a lot of support underwear underneath and, and they're all wearing all beige so it might not be... Uh, the worst thing in the world if it's not lined, but I do want a good look at it under the stage lights. Here are the dresses for the Supremes. Um, 
they don't look that great uh, on a hanger. They look much better on the body. Um, so for some of the girls, I had to add in these darts to curve around the bust. And then here are some tucks. We will pretend that these are straight, <laughs> um, but this helps curve the fabric to the body under the bust. And then for this girl in particular, um, her front was very low. So I took in her um, straps at the shoulder seam a little bit to raise that up a little bit. Um, and yeah, that's what we were working with. While I didn't make it specifically for this show, I did want to give a quick honorable mention to this dress that I wear in the opening bits of the show. This is technically a Peggy Carter cosplay dress that I made back in like 2015, but I used to wear this out swing dancing all the time back when that was still a thing. So when I found out that my first number in the show was a swing dance, I thought that this would be a perfect fit. This pattern is one that I found in my mom's old pattern stash, and it's a combination of a 80s does 40s kind of style top, and then sort of a more like straight kind of bell-shaped skirt from another pattern, but it didn't have enough swing to it. So I opened up the side seams and put in these little gores that make it really fun to twirl around it. All right, so here's the dress that I made for my number, which is a ballet dance to Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, not Let's Get It On. Important difference there. So this is a slight modification of an original 1970s pattern that I used, which happens to be this one, which is Vogue 7852. Um, and I liked this one because it had uh, these really fun little bishop sleeves. I was looking for something long sleeve for this number. Um, it also had a very big collar, which was very popular in the 1970s. And I made it out of this really lightweight, not 100% sure what this fabric is. I bought five yards of it when I was in the garment district in New York a couple of years ago. Um, so the skirt is one single layer, and you may notice that it is a little bit see-through. It's a little bit sheer. So for the bodice, I cut out two layers, and I basically flatlined it. And I was really careful when I cut it out to... Um, kind of have this motif in what would be the blank area, so it gives that it a little bit more dimension uh, and it makes it a little bit more visually interesting to look at. So I used the top half, so the bodice from that pattern, and then I just made a circle skirt out of what was left. Um, it was super easy, it came together within about four hours. And overall, except from the uh, that issue, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So I need to do a little bit of work on one of my dresses, but the issue that I'm having is that the fabric that I use, it's very, it's very light and it's very airy. And as a result, it completely flies up whenever I turn, which normally isn't an issue. I don't have an issue with that, but I was advised that there may be some, some pearl clutching of some little old ladies in the front row who may be very scandalized if my skirt flies up. So there is an old trick. I was specifically reminded they used it in Ginger Rogers costumes in the old like silver screen era of where they would sew weights into the hem of her dresses so that they could use all these beautiful flowy airy fabrics but they wouldn't keep flying up all over the place. Now they do in fact make specialized like dress weights but one they are expensive for what they are. Two I think they're gonna be a little bit too heavy for what I'm trying to do here so my fabric is very light and it's very comparatively loosely woven so I'm worried that if I put too much weight on it, it's going to put too much tension at that waist seam and it will kind of help deteriorate and I might get some separation and some unweaving at that seam. All right, we're gonna try this again because when I filmed this yesterday, I thought that I pressed record, but apparently I didn't. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of what I wound up doing. So the point that I was trying to get at was that I needed something cheap and very light to make my weights out of. And I don't remember where I heard this trick first, but hardware store washers, just really cheap hardware store washers. So I went to Home Depot. I went to their washer section and I picked up the lightest container of washers, which in this case happens to be number eight. And these are stainless steel and they have maximum rust protection, uh, which is great for me because if they didn't, then I would have to um, take them outside and shellac them and do a couple layers of like a clear gloss or a clear spray paint or a clear shellac or something like that because I need to wash this dress occasionally because it gets really sweaty really quickly. So I do need to wash it. And um, as you probably saw, the dress material is very light and rust stains would show up very easily. So I need to make sure it doesn't rust. Now I can't just sew the washers onto the hem of the dress because as it moves the, the metallic, of the washers will catch the light and I don't want it to be super distracting. 
So I have to make little pouches to put the washers in. So basically what I did was, was I took a scrap of the leftover material from the dress. I cut a two inch wide strip and it happened to be 16 inches long. And I folded it in half, similar to this one, which I made out of the scrap of the scraps. And then I sewed along the long edge. And then on the real one, I marked a line every two inches. So I sewed very close to one end and then I sewed a line um, every two inches to kind of create little pouches and I cut into these and I kind of you know how when you go to the supermarket and go to the produce section and you get the little um, like plastic bags that you put your like apples and, and onions and stuff in um, and it has one sealed end and one opened end and that that's kind of what I tried to create here so this way I could make a cut just under the seal of the next pouch so that I would have one sewn end of each kind of two. So then I took a metal straw, which I prefer to chopsticks because metal straws are smooth and a chopstick I was worried would just kind of like catch on this fabric. So I turned all my tubes right side out and pressed them. I decided on eight in total so that I could have one at the front, one in the back, two on each side, and then on the eighth marks um, away from that. So that would be eight total around the skirt. And I thought that that would be a very good kind of evenly distributed weight. But then I, I picked up a bunch of washers and at first I picked up 16 washers because I was thinking of doing two in each little pouch. Uh, that didn't really seem to be enough to me. So I, I added eight more washers to my hand and that felt like enough weight. That felt like a good weight that I was happy with. So I just went and added one more washer to each little pouch and I chain stitched these shut. I didn't worry about like turning this edge inward or anything. So I chain stitched all of these shut and I did that on top of some tissue paper um, because I noticed that I was having a little bit of problem with the machine kind of eating the fabric. So if you do that on top of tissue paper, um, the machine won't eat your fabric and then you could just tear the tissue paper really easy off at the end. So that is how I made my little weights and then I attached them to the skirt with a large basting stitch. I just kind of went boop 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 on each side with my machine. Thought about sewing it on by hand but no matter what I do, um, because it was only one layer of the skirt, there was going to be some visible stitching on the outside, so I figured I might as well save myself a little bit of time and do it by machine. And then after I had tacked everything on, I went back into my kitchen, set my tripod up again, and twirled around a little bit to see what it would look like. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it made that big of a difference. Um, I definitely feel a difference when I'm wearing the dress and when I'm holding the dress. I'm not sure if it made the biggest difference in keeping the hem down, um, but we'll just let the footage speak for itself. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure if that made it better or worse because momentum is mass times velocity. So if you increase one of them, the whole system increases. So if I'm just adding more mass, even if I'm keeping the velocity constant, it's gonna increase the momentum. So, um, you know what, we'll see. So a more last minute costume piece that I made for this show is this absolute showstopper of a rhinestoned cowboy shirt. So I got some plain black cotton, I traced out a pattern uh, based on some reference pictures I looked up of Western wear, then I tacked it onto this shirt with a zigzag stitch. And I was having trouble covering, lining everything up properly along the shoulder, so I made some quick little epaulettes as well to cover those gaps. And I really wanted to put some fringe on there, I thought that would be fun, so I found this pleather trim and sewed that on by machine as well. Then I rhinestoned the absolute bejesus out of it. So I had this huge collection of rhinestones and sparkly things, and most of it had been sitting, just not being used for years, so I went to town. And it took me two days of gluing all this on to get it done. And yes, it was a huge hit with the audience, and I am so proud of how this turned out. So when it comes to stage shows, in addition to making costumes, sometimes you have to repair costumes. So we are going into our final weekend of the show, and in the last show, last week, one of the zippers broke on one of the girls' dresses. Now this is an invisible zipper. And what did I say earlier? Something to the extent of, if there's a guaranteed way for a zipper to fail, let's use an invisible zipper. I think she said she bought this dress cheap off of Amazon, so like, what else would you expect? But anyway. So the issue that she was having is that there's a hole somewhere on the line of this invisible zipper and it's right where the plastic, the plastic is starting to tear apart from that little fabric strap. 
Even though it zips up and down just fine here, you start to put tension on it when you're zipping it up or down and the tension goes out this way, the little head of the zipper can catch on that hole a lot easier, which makes it a lot harder to actually wear and get into the dress. So she has asked me if I could replace the zipper. I said I would definitely give it my best shot. She said she did not want an invisible zipper this time around. Specifically, she said an upholstery zipper, but I couldn't find a purple one. So I just had this regular polyester zipper. Before I went to the store, I measured this old zipper and it was 14 inches. So I got myself a 14 inch royal purple polyester zipper to match this. So I'm going to install this the same way that I like to install my zippers now, which is to baste the center back seam shut, line up the zipper on the underside, line it up with that center seam, and then stitch about a half an inch away on each side from that zipper. And what that'll do is create a little bit of a flap so that the fabric will be able to pull away a little bit so that you can zip up and down and you won't have to worry about too much tension right next to the, the plastic teeth. And I think, knock on wood, I think that's the last thing that I really have to do for this show. All right, so that was the video. Those were the projects that I was working on throughout this run of this show. So yeah, I definitely had a blast working on them, even if I am still cleaning up glitter from everywhere. I hope you enjoyed this kind of behind the scenes sneak peek into what goes into costuming a show. So this was a full musical review and every single number had different costumes. So there were definitely more costumes that I didn't make than I did make, but I did still make 10, 10 costumes. 10 costumes I either fully made or mostly fully made were seen in this show, which my record is 17. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a like, a comment. You can consider subscribing to this channel. Hopefully I will get back to doing some more regular pattern and sewing tutorials. Although admittedly, all the ones that I'm excited to work on are true vintage patterns, so they're not necessarily easily accessible to everybody. But if you are interested in seeing that process, let me know and I will definitely film that like I film all of my other pattern sew-throughs. And if you're interested in more behind the scenes things, you can go ahead and give me a follow over on Instagram over at Thread and Needlefish. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Every time I wear this jumper, I feel like a stewardess if the Adams Family owned an airline which honestly they probably do. I feel like I should be standing in the center aisle of a plane right now, just, hi, welcome aboard Adams Family Airlines, where our passengers shriek with delight. Where will your final destination be? The beautiful snowy expanse of Siberia? The stunning catacombs of Paris? Perhaps a quick day trip to the shores of Alcatraz? Ba-da-da-dum.